Most men live lives of quiet desperation. A quote I would play on repeat in my mind while training. While I'm still on this journey, I took one step closer to truly understanding it. When people look at risk, they normally look at failure, afraid to challenge themselves because of risking embarrassment. What they do not understand is that the risk isn't about the end goal. The risk is about the journey. Finding out what you're made of and challenging the status quo molds a person. Being uncomfortable over time teaches you to never give up because comfort is desperation killing your dream. A dream is only possible with action, setting a goal, preparing, then giving it your all. Over the course of this race, every step, steep climb, and mile move me closer to the goal of finishing, but ultimately discovering my potential. The Leadville Race Series is one of the most famous ultra marathons in the United States. They're most famously known for their 100 mile trail race. They also have the Silver Rush 50, 50 mile mountain bike races, 100 mile mountain bike races, and smaller 5Ks, 10Ks, 15 mile races. The reason I chose Leadville to do my first ultra marathon was simply because I wanted to challenge myself to figure out what I was made of. Here in Kentucky, elevation is around 800 feet. I wanted to challenge myself to go out to Leadville to really start at that elevation of 10,000 feet, peaking over 12,000 feet four times. And while I was out there, it definitely challenged me. I figured out what I was made of. And just the overall race experience was something that I'll never forget. Leadville Race Series is truly an unbelievable and astonishing organization and the Silver Rush 50 was something that I will never forget for the rest of my life. How do you feel? Good. A little <laughs> nervous. Five, four, three, two, one. So the gun went off and the racers started making their way up the hill. So the first man and the first woman who made it to the top automatically got a qualifying chip for the 100 mile trail race. It was really cool seeing everybody run up the hill trying to get there um, and ultimately two people ended up getting it and away they go. I make my way to the top. I walked up. I didn't want to exert a lot of energy. I walked up it the day before. I knew I wasn't in the running to get the qualifying ship, so I wanted to save as much energy as I could. The race starts, we go probably less than, probably less than a half a mile, up to a half a mile into the woods before we kind of circle back to where the, uh, the bottom of the hill was, make a sharp left, and away we go into the trails. So the first seven miles from race start to mile seven um everybody was pretty much on top of each other 
the faster guys broke away, um, but I just wanted to stay my own speed. My plan going into the race was to walk the uphills, run the flats, and the downhills. Overall, I did a pretty good job of that the first seven miles. Ended up meeting an awesome guy, talked with for a couple, um, just hearing his story, how he got into endurance races, him actually doing uh, the 50 mile race the year before. Uh, just cool to hear his story and to know that, you know, people who are watching my videos are actually doing the same things that I'm doing. Um, so it was just awesome to connect with people out there on the trail. The first seven miles, uh, it was beautiful. We were in, you know, the trail was relatively flat with rolling hills as we made our way up to the first peak at about mile 10. The first aid station, I didn't stop at. Um, I didn't really go through as much fluid as what I thought that I would have. Um, so I, I just went right past the first aid station and kept making my way up to the top of the peak before we came back down to the second aid station. We are an hour and 51 minutes in. Just got to mile eight. First 10 miles of this is uh, uphill. Haven't hit too many steep uphills yet, but uh, there's been a couple that have gotten to me. Overall, the elevation's kind of getting it to me, but not too much. Um, back at like seven and a half miles was the first aid station, and I blew past that one. I'm gonna stop at the next one, mile 14. Just been sipping on my water so far. No goos yet. Probably gonna rip one here soon, but eight mile check in. Overall, feeling decent. Let's just keep going. miles check in two hours 26 minutes it's really starting to get pretty steep out here but I'm just sticking with the game plan running the flats walking the ups trying to keep the legs fresh because on the way back we got 10 miles downhill so I'm trying to stay fresh for that and to finish strong I think right now it's just the, the elevation legs are on par for running 10 miles through the mountains so I'll catch you guys at the mile 14 checkpoint So coming into mile 14 aid station at Prencher Boy, I was really um, excited to see Courtney for the first time. 14 miles in, the race was going very well for me. I felt like the, the climb up to mile 10 and then back down to mile 14, um, it really started to slow me down from the first seven, eight-ish miles. Uh, but the, that, that climb really got to me and the elevation uh, was it was really the first time that I started to experience the elevation in my running but coming into mile 14 I refueled on my G1M Sport and my electrolytes both bottles I passed on food because my stomach honestly it wasn't feeling like I needed to eat I knew I probably should have but I wanted to make sure that my fluids were up as I had goose with me in my running sack Knowing that, you know, if I got hungry after this aid station, before I made it to the next one, I had goose to rely on. I sat there for 
roughly five minutes, just trying to catch my, you know, my bearings, catch my breath again, just really soaking in the moment, just trying to enjoy everything that this race had to offer. Um, for the most part, I ran with the same group of people um, from the start to that first aid station. So it was really cool just to see how they were interacting with their friends and family, the people that came out to support them, and just all the volunteers, the energy that they were bringing, you know, really cheering you on. So from there, I left mile 14, and we still had about, I would say, a mile and a half um, decline before we, we bottomed out and made it up to the next really steep climb. That climb really got to me. Uh, that is where I think that my race really ended um, with, with the running. I was still feeling great body-wise, but that climb, I would guess it was about two miles, um, pretty steep climb up to the next 12,000 foot peak where we hit, I think it was mile 19 aid station. From there, um, people were starting to come back. I think the leader passed me at four hours in and I was on mile 16 and he was on his way back. So kudos to that guy, he was really crushing it. But that climb put a damper in uh, the speed that I was really getting to the top of it. And again, the elevation really got to me before I got to the mile 19 aid station. Just past mile 19, aid station. It is 11.08 in the morning. Race started at six. We are 19.26, five hours and eight minutes in. Legs are feeling surprisingly good. Um, I haven't been able to eat much though. I just tried to eat a cliff bar with the dry air up here. It just was like eating semen or something. I don't know. I'm gonna try to goo here in a few miles, but just been sipping water and electrolytes, so bike's feeling good. Catch you guys at mile 25 at the turnaround. Leaving mile 19 aid station, uh, it was downhill. We got to run through the mines, which was really cool to see. Uh, it was awesome seeing all the people crushing it back on the way up. I was running my own race, being steady with running the downhills as much as I could. Um, the elevation on the downhills didn't get to me as much as going uphill, obviously, but going into the turnaround, um, it really messed with you the way that the race was set up. So when I came off of the second 12,000 foot peak at mile 19, before I hit the aid station, I could see it, but little did I know that I still had about two more miles that we had to circle a, uh, another fire access road peak type thing to get to that aid station. So rolling up to the turnaround point, it was at mile 23 and a half, I believe. And from there, I was still feeling great. My body, um, nothing was really sore or achy. And my muscles, you know, my quads were still there. I was feeling really good at the turnaround. I came in an hour and a half before cutoff, knowing that I had plenty of time. I wanted to sit there for a while definitely re-up the uh, liquids. I think at this point I had switched to one of my flask had um, G1M Sport and electrolytes and the other one was just water. I was really starting to crave a lot of water more than electrolytes and um, the, the sodium. So I had Courtney make sure that one was water, one was electrolytes. I still passed on food, which looking back was not a very good idea. Um, so now at this point, I'm about six hours in, and the only thing that I've eaten was the breakfast that I had pre-race, and I believe one goo out on the course. Uh, stomach just wasn't feeling food, and overall, I just wasn't feeling very hungry, which was odd because my body was feeling really good at running 23 miles. So I was kind of listening to my body, knowing I should have eaten more, but also knowing that I felt like my body was gonna reject food uh, and all it was craving was liquid. And so I sat at the turnaround point, probably longer than what I should have, but again, I wanted to make sure that, you know, my legs stayed fresh. I knew I had to go back through what I just hit, 23 more miles of unknown, not knowing how this race was gonna fold, unfold, uh, if anything was gonna flare up, but 
definitely was crushing some Gatorade, fluid, fluid, fluid as much as I could and um, still passed on the food. Leaving the turnaround point, um, people were starting to thin out on the way back in. So I kind of knew where I was standing at with um, where I was at compared to obviously the finisher. He was probably close, if not done at the time that I left the turnaround. But I knew that, you know, my biggest goal in any race is to never come in last. But I knew that I was getting slower as the race went on. And in the back of my mind, that's where cutoffs really started to come into place. So I knew that I had another steep climb back up to um, the aid station at the top of the second peak. Going into my third 1200 foot or 12,000 foot elevation climb um, really was starting to weigh on me mentally. I knew that I had another 12,000 foot climb and then also cutoffs were starting to become a factor in So coming into Printer Boy for the second time, I had not ran from the turnaround to the top of the 12,000 foot, back down, and then almost halfway up the fourth 12,000 foot elevation climb. I just couldn't get my body to start running again. Still was not craving any food. Um, water was going in, but it wasn't coming out electrolytes were still in there and just overall i was starting to mentally wear down into this race everything about this race humbled me everything about the experience humbled me going into this last aid station knowing this was the last time that i would see courtney before the finish line um, really put a pep into my step i came into this aid station about an hour before cutoff so i knew that i had lost 30 minutes by walking um, from the lat from the turnaround back up to printer boy I knew I had time but I also knew that cutoffs they were starting to get closer and more on my mind when I left printer boy to head up to the peak of the last 12,000 plus foot of ele elevation gain um, that was very hard it was very hard to motivate myself to get to the top of that elevation was really starting to kick in and just overall I knew that the race was going downhill. Once I got down from that last 12,000 foot elevation gain I knew what the course was going to be like. I knew that there was rolling hills. I knew that there wasn't any more steep climbs left. But I also knew that I had one more aid station to hit before I could cross that finish line. That aid station cutoff was at 6 o'clock at night. I crossed that aid station with 20 minutes left before cutoff. And at this point in my mind, I was looking at my watch. I knew that my race was coming down to the wire. I knew that all this preparation, all the people that supported me, that there was a chance that I was going to let them down. And that was one thing that I did not want to do, was to let down the people who supported me, who watched my videos. Knowing that I'm not an ultra runner, knowing that I'm just getting into this endurance world, this was the first time that I really felt that challenge, that pressure of failure in a race. The closer I got to the finish line, the closer the time ticked to a DNF, did not finish. That was one thing I did not want on my endurance resume was to not finish this race. The closer I got, the more stressed out that I got, 
the more that my body started to hurt. My IT band started to flare up. At this point, I had still not eaten anything all day other than what I had for breakfast and a goo on the course. I was starting to become delusional. I was starting to really fear that I wasn't gonna be able to cross the finish line. By this time, I was super stressed out. Didn't think that I was gonna finish. I even told myself multiple times that I will not be finishing this race, but I'm gonna give it my all and hopefully I can cross the finish line. Ended up finishing the race at 13 hours and 45 minutes. I had 15 minutes to spare. Pretty much from the turnaround, I had walked the whole way back to the start finish line. That was not the intention of my race, but that is what ended up unfolding. Congratulations, followed by Zach Curtis from Dry Ridge, Kentucky. And another finisher, it looks like. Thank you. Once I crossed the finish line, I sat down at the medical tent and from there, everything caught up to me. The stress, the shock, the not eating, the lack of fluids that I just didn't prepare for a 13 hour, 45 minute race. It was suggested that I go to the hospital to get more fluids into my body. Um, I agreed to it, but ultimately on the way to the hospital, I turned around, I started feeling a lot better. But with that race, with that finish, it taught me something. One of the most valuable experiences that I'm gonna take with me for the rest of my life. And that is if you prepare for something, if you know that you have a goal in mind, to never give up. I could have easily given up knowing that I wasn't gonna finish that race. That time wasn't sexy to anybody but it meant something to me. It meant that I was able to go out there and challenge myself. It meant that I was able to accomplish something that I had never thought that I would have dreamed to do in my life. And that is to complete an ultra marathon, let alone complete a Leadville Race Series Ultra for my first experience. Leadville, you were amazing. You are always gonna be in my heart. That experience, that challenge, that do hard things mentality is something that I'm gonna incorporate into my everyday life. And something that I will never forget was how amazing the views were out there on the race and how amazing that race was. I can't thank you guys enough for following along this journey. This is something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And hopefully you guys experienced feelings and the emotions that I had during that race and take that and put it and implement it into your life and to challenge yourself to do hard things and in the end it might make you a better person.